The presumed coordinator of the Paris attacks may be dead, but the manhunt continues for others. Abdelhamid Abaoud among two bodies identified in the wake of Wednesday's raid on an apartment in the suburb of Saint-Denis. How did the Belgian-Moroccan dual national turn up so close to the scene of last Friday's coordinated massacres when everyone thought he was in Syria? Uh, what was their next target? And what about the fugitives still on the loose? The manhunt continues as Parliament votes to extend a state of emergency for three months. One of the main issues is how far should the crackdown go on those who preach hate in radical mosques? Are leaders right to arm municipal police officers, increase web surveillance, and allow search and seizures without a court warrant? Some are calling it a French Patriot Act. To what point? Will security trump the rights of citizens? Today in the France Venquette debate, we're looking at France's state of emergency. With us, centrist Senator Nathalie Goulet, who chairs the French Upper House's uh, Commission on Jihadist Networks. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, he's a contributor to the French edition of the Huffington Post. Azif Arif directs the Religion and Secularism Collection for French publishing house L'Armatan. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. Uh, joining us from Toronto, Canada, the co-author of The Undercover Jihadi, a uh, Canadian Mubin Sheikh, who after his experience in Afghanistan today uh, advises Canadian intelligence services, most notably on de-radicalizations. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you very much, very much for having me. And attorney Etienne Drouard, who uh, knows all and tells all when it comes to things such as data protection and uh, privacy rights. Thank mm -hmm. you for being with us again. Thank you. The France Fed Gets Debate, where you can join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter, our hashtag F24Debate. The body's been positively identified. It was indeed Abdelhamid Abaoud, the French interior minister, Bernard Cazeneuve, explaining that six terror plots uh, have uh, been foiled in France since the spring, and Abdelhamid Abaoud was perhaps involved in four of them. Since the spring of 2015, Abaoud has been involved in four of them. These elements seem to be signed with the same mode of operations. Violent acts, planned overseas, perpetrated by jihadists from European countries, trained to use weapons, then sent back to our territory to perpetrate these attacks. The investigation is, of course, still ongoing. Nathalie Goulet, uh, we thought he was in Syria. He shows up on Paris's doorstep in Saint-Denis. What was your reaction? Well, first of all, I, I don't want to interfere in the investigation. It's not my place. But uh, during our investigation committee, we point out a lot of, uh, let's say, um, difficulties with exchanges of uh, intelligence. And uh, obviously something happened. And then we do not have any bat databases uh, with, uh, with those people. Difficulty in exchange of information with whom? With, first of all, with European country. Uh, not with the United States, but with some European country, and then uh, uh, we miss uh, some cooperation too. Obviously, something happened here. Now, the Belgian Prime Minister, a bit angry that he gets the feeling the French are pointing the finger at him, saying, we sent you guys a note a few months ago and you didn't pick up on it. You know, it's, it's very difficult because sometimes those people are traveling with uh, authentic passport, but they are not th there as passports. You know, we, you, there is a, a huge traffic of passport in Turkey. And then we cannot put a, a policeman behind everybody. And then uh, uh, Schengen borders uh, are what they are. So it's, it's quite a difficult issue, really. Mubin Sheikh, what conclusions do you draw on this point? Well, I mean, this is a, it's a problem in terms of uh, the French situation with uh, their Muslim population. Uh, there really is a, a, a deep-seated um, grievance against the marginalization, the lack of opportunities. This is not something that's going to be fixed overnight. This is going to require a, a really uh, big effort. Uh, on part of the government, on part of society itself. That, that, that's the broader issue, and we'll get to that in, in a moment. But on the specific case here uh, of Abdelhamid Abaoud, uh, what are your thoughts on, on this uh, dual national, Belgian-Moroccan, born in Brussels, starts off as a delinquent, uh, is able to uh, 
to wind up uh, traveling around without being noticed, uh, thought to be linked to many attacks, including the one on the uh, Amsterdam-Paris train, uh, said to be in Syria, but was in fact in France. Y your thoughts on that? Well, I mean, this is consistent with the, the whole foreign fighter uh, situation. Uh, people who have not just gone over, but um, one theory is, in fact, they're using other people's passports. Um, you know, when we in the beginning, we saw a lot of these foreign fighters burning passports uh, on video, uh, repudiating their citizenship effectively. But uh, nobody actually looked to check to see whose passports they're burning. Um, so this is one thing that uh, we saw with the Canadian individual um, who, you know, he burned his passport, but he was still able to enter into uh, other European countries. And he could only do that with, a, with another passport. That's one possible explana explanation as to how this guy who was known to have gone in Syria, uh, how he ended up where he did. Azif Arif, your thoughts on what we've seen in the past 24 hours. We don't have confirmation that uh, the other person killed, by the way, in Wednesday's raid, uh, was a suicide attacker. That's still being looked into. Uh, but we do know that last Friday, it was possibly a first in France's history. Suicide bombers. This is a new step for this country. Well, yes. Uh, I mean, it has been uh, commented by every news channel that this is a first time for France. But uh, it's also... A very, uh, I'm uh, representing uh, the Muslim community here. So what I wanted to say is, uh, on behalf of Muslims, it's a pain to see that these people are claiming Islam actually to doing their acts. So uh, actually my thoughts is uh, to uh, take the fact that these people are criminal. It has been doing once, but it, maybe it will happen again. We don't know. We need to take over these issues of radicalism and you, you, you say you, you talk about it. I mean, we will see the broader picture of it. But what I want to say is uh, we should act as Muslim uh, in favor of uni unity and uh, to, to say uh, with dignity uh, with the government, uh, actually, and that's all what we can say tonight. Etienne Drouard, we saw, and we'll talk about that later, uh, this, the state of emergency overwhelmingly approved. France in a state of shock. Again, suicide bombers, attacks on cafes, a bloodbath at the Bataclan concert hall, uh, the, the, the lapses that we've seen with these guys able to, to get under the radar of authorities. What are your reactions to those things? The first one in relation to the state of uh, emergency is that checks and balances will be for later, not now. Um, because proportionality in the investigation needs to be performed very quickly with any means available. So I have absolutely no problem with the, this kind of declaration. For sure, uh, we have to think not only of the current situation, but on the future. There will be a legislative debate on that, a reform of the Constitution. And I would not like to be um, to be right now, there are two fugitives that are yeah. still on the run. Will this be an easier debate to have once they've been caught? Oh, I think we won't have time for that. So there will be a majority to adopt any reform available or proposed by our government. Whatever happens, uh, these texts will be adopted almost as they have been drafted uh, in emergency. But as a lawyer, I think today and for the future about the way we can balance situations even when there is not such an emergency. All right, that's a point we'll pick up on. Now, among those denouncing the attacks, the imam of a mosque in the city of Brest, who's suddenly uh, been the focus of a lot of interest, his name is Rashid Abu Hudayfa. He's a native of the, that Brittany port city. Uh, this video has been making the rounds on YouTube. It shows him teaching a religious studies class where he claims that music comes from Satan, that those who listen to it will be swallowed up by the earth and transformed into monkeys and swines. Uh, quote, he, he doesn't preach jihad. Let's be clear about that. But does he overstep the limit when he says things like that? I mean, well, uh, concerning uh, Islam, uh, of course, when you when you have these kind of uh, issues, you need to remember what the uh, Prophet Muhammad has said about all these religion stuff. Um, well, this guy has a lot of publicity here in France, of course, but what we have to say and what we have to take on it is that the Holy Prophet 
always preach the moderation in every circumstances. So he always said, for example, that uh, religion shall not be performed in such a harsh way that they uh, that they kill your belief. Actually, it should be elastic. You need to have a moderation in what you do. So basically, when you say that, it's it's not only a vulgar language, but it's also not moderate, so. How should authorities be treating something like that? I mean, there is a lot of, this is the debate about what- Do you, do you shut down his mosque? Well, it's, it's, the, it's a debate in between how far the free speech can go in between into mosques. Is this a sharing of idea or is this more than sharing an idea? And this is actually the work of Governments. This is not the work of uh, Muslim leaders who are doing, uh, I mean, who has a peaceful teaching, who always spread uh, peaceful things around their mosques, you know. And there are 2,500 mosques in France and, uh, and, and prayer rooms, and only a very small minority are radicalized. It's important to point that out. Uh, but again, we're talking about, and, and by the way, this the same man is quoted by Paris Match as saying, a woman who doesn't wear the veil runs the risk of rape. What would you do about that mosque in Brest? First of all, you point out a very important point that we also underline in our report, unfortunately, without success. But uh, we have a big problem in here to train imam and chaplain. Uh, our clerical regulations at la laicity Prevents secularism, I Yes, suppose. secularism yeah. prevents a state to be involved in the religion, whatever is a religion, which means that normally uh, we cannot do anything. And uh, we, we have a real problem with the training of uh, imam to know who is a right imam, as you say, and who is a Salafism and who is extremism and, and who is going to do what and what kind of preach. And uh, do we have to uh, interfere and ask for preach in, in French, as the British are doing with preach in, in um, a sermon, in sermon in English? Yeah. And, uh, and then uh, do we need some um, imam in the Minister of Interior, like in Home Office, uh, to help uh, the Minister of Interior and the staff uh, to, to understand what happened? You know, all that, it's a debate into the debate. And unfortunately, Islam is not a religion that's highly centralized the way the French state is. Uh, yeah, well, just just a few minutes on the thought that uh, the senator just shared with us is I just wanted to uh, say that the leader of Ahmadiyya Muslim community, which is in London, he is located in London, has said something very, I think, very small about all this, uh, all this situation. He said... When you have radical mosques, you need to define, I mean, political powers needs to define what is a radical speech or what is a radical thought. When it's defined, you need to go to, and to send intelligence to these mosques. And this is not a, a spying. You can, you can send some people who will monitor the sermons, who will look after these people who, be, who are being radicalized and who will shut down these mosques. Normally they, use, pardon, normally they use this kind of mosque for the intelligence to follow some connecting uh, network or connections and, and know who is going to do what. You know, it's, it's, it's like that. But at the same time, if you shut this spring down, if you close the mosque, they will go and pray somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And you have the seller in Islam, which is worse, because you cannot find them. Uh, Mubin Sheikh, you agree? Well, this is, again, a, a big debate uh, in, in all Western countries. Where is the line between freedom of speech and incitement? Um, so, for example, when this imam says, you know, things like uh, music, uh, you know, I mean, there's a, there's no open prohibition on music. There's a very particular prohibition on, uh, on, on particular types of dancing and types of music. Um, but it, this is not something that, uh, it's not incitement per se. It's not criminal behavior. It's not something you can shut down. Um, they're, they're disgusting ideas. It does lead to uh, dehumanization of the other, um, and, and dehumanization is one of the steps before a violent extremism. Um, so there's really nothing you can do, and I, and I share the view of... Uh, no, nothing of, you can uh, do, so you can't shut down the, that mosque, in your view, because it just drives them underground? Not just that. I mean, I wanted to highlight that point, that it will drive them under down, uh, underground, and uh, we do have, uh, I'm sure there's human intelligence keeping track on all these things, but more so uh, it's not criminal incitement. It's not, uh, it's not criminal behavior. There's nothing you can do in that regard.
All right, far-right leader Marine Le Pen, who is riding high in the polls in this country ahead of regional elections, calling uh, on breakfast radio this Thursday for a wholesale crackdown on Islamist radicals. The president should not content himself with simply fighting fear. I'd like him to get to the heart of the problem and fight danger, not only terrorist threats, but also fundamentalist Islamist ideology. He should begin by closing the hundred or so Salafist mosques currently being monitored by the Interior Ministry. Uh, as if I she calls for the closing down of Salafist mosques. Well, it's uh, you, you should take the debate. I mean, uh, you should put this debate on the table in front of the into your Home Office Minister, let's per se. But uh, we should see that if these Salafis mosques are are proning or are spreading some hate speech or some speech who are uh, radical, uh, radical. But what is radicalism? And this is the main problem. This is the key issue of this debate. We don't know today what is a radical speech. Uh, Nathalie Goulet, uh, do you agree with Marine Le Pen's math that there's a uh, 100 or so mosques that need to be shut? I don't know, but uh, but for sure there is there is a problem. You know, we are in a, in a very difficult time. We face a very difficult time, and if we are talking about uh, uh, Islam, commun Muslim, Islam community, communitarianism, we have to have an open discussion with the Conseil Français du Culte Musulman, and uh, and we have to discuss openly with the problems, even. And, uh, and uh, the problem is that we cannot solve this question without the Muslims. We have to work together. And that is the main issue. And during my investigation committee, we wanted to open this, uh, this uh, file, and it was not possible to discuss. But then you, you have a lot of issues, especially radicalization in jail, how you train the chaplain, how you pay them, because it's not possible for the state to pay the chaplain, which creates a lot of troubles because they're not in a number enough, you know, we need more and more, and all that, uh, it, it's a full debate, and if you put the debate of the um, Islamic religion or Muslim religion in France, you, you are open to any kind of discussion, and, and that creates a big, big mess, especially before election. All right, especially before and we, we need And we need to talk about that, right. really. We're going to come back and we're going to talk about the other measures inside of this state of emergency that's been declared for three months. Stay with us. You're watching the France 24 debate.